So after 14 years of medical training, I have finally accepted my very first job as an attending diagnostic and interventional radiologist. Cue the applause. Beginning. Yeah, and to you finally finishing all your medical training. Cheers. So it is a very special day for me. I finally accepted a job and I wanted to kind of come on here and tell you all about it because not many people talk about their first job as an attending with the exception of like Antonio Webb, my boy. I wanted to kind of follow suit and talk about my job as an attending and keep this whole medical theme transparent because that's what I try to do on this channel. So let's go ahead and talk about my job. So first and foremost, where is my job located? Now I'm not going to give you the specifics yet, but I will say it is in the tri-state area. And for those of you that don't know what the tri-state area includes, it includes Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York mostly New York City. Now, I won't tell you exactly where my job is located or the name of my practice, but I will say that I will be regretfully moving out of Manhattan. I just got up here in June. I think I just posted that video of me moving back to New York City like in June. Link up here if you haven't seen it. I actually watched that video with Andriana last night because I kind of missed our old apartment in North Carolina and... What was that noise? We wanted to kind of look at our old apartment in North Carolina and I show that apartment in that video. But nonetheless, I'm moving out of New York. Maybe for good, who knows? So why did I take this job? For one, I was looking for a job that was ultimately close to family. Now my family is spread out, as you know, or maybe you don't know, my family is spread out all over the Eastern United States. I was born and raised in Georgia. My mom still lives in Georgia. My father lives in Ohio. You've seen me visit him on a prior vlog. I filmed it, link up here as well. My younger brother is in radiology residency in Chicago. My older brother, the neurosurgery veterinarian, link up here to his channel. He just moved from Chicago to Rhode Island. So all of my family is kind of everywhere. However, Andrana's huge Croatian family is all in New York City. So ultimately, we had to kind of choose one family group to be near and we wanted to be near her family because eventually we're going to start having kids and raising a family and you want to be near your family when you start to do that so you know essentially happy wife happy life ultimately i wanted to kind of stay up here as well i am moving out of the city but i'm staying in the tri-state area so i'm not gonna to be too far away the second thing i wanted out of location was i wanted a job close to new york city ultimately i do a lot of social media type stuff and Social media is thriving in Manhattan and I wanted to be near somewhere like Manhattan where I could go and film or go and do collaborations or even do TV shows for all I know. I'll do some reporting on the news channel, I don't know. But I just wanted to be near where all the action was. I didn't want to move to straight up like middle of nowhere Kansas and not have any access and have to take a plane to go to like LA or New York or all that stuff. This sounds super superficial, but it was, you know, semi part of my decision making. So before I talk about the nitty gritty of my job, I'll talk about how many interviews I went on or how many jobs I applied to. And ultimately, I really only applied to one job. I treat jobs like dating. I'm not gonna go on dates or go on interviews to look at a job or date other people. Not that I'm, this is kind of a bad analogy because I'm married now, but I treated dating and job hunting the same way. I'm not going to waste my time going on an interview or waste my time dating someone if I didn't see a future with that person or with that company. So I treated job hunting the same way. I wouldn't reach out to a practice unless I thought it was something I would be really interested in or something that fit my lifestyle and what I was wanting out of a practice. I hope this is making sense. So ultimately I call this job on a whim over Christmas break because Andrana wanted me to because it's close to family around New York City and I was like, okay, well, I'll reach out to him, see what's going on. I've never even heard of this location in my entire life and I sure as hell didn't ever think I would move here. But nonetheless, I reached out to them, had a fantastic conversation with one of the guys in the practice. We ended up scheduling the interview over New Year's, I believe. Went on the interview, 
Loved it, loved the hospital, loved the practice. Ultimately, everything kind of worked out and I accepted the job. Now I did email a few other places just trying to get some information on them, but I didn't actually pursue them because I wasn't interested. So now let's talk about my job. So the reason I took this job is for many different reasons, but the main thing is it fit exactly what I was looking for in a practice. For one, it is a private practice with a short-term partnership track, which means you are a salaried employee for two to three years, depending on the practice. And then once you hit that partnership track, you can be accepted into a partner of the practice and share in everything of the practice together. So all the partners make equal pay depending on how well the practice does or how poorly the practice does. So this had a short partnership track, which I was looking for. Secondly, it's a private practice and it is going to be handling kind of the mid to lower tier complexity, which I've talked about on a prior video when it comes to complexity of treating patients. I'll link up here as well when I compare it academic versus private practice. I kind of think of this as like the general complexity of what I'll be treating. It's not going to be the crazy eight hour high end procedures that I do at my current fellowship, but it's not going to be some like bare bones three minute biopsies here and there where I like a thyroid biopsy. I can do those in my sleep at this point. So I wanted something middle of the road and that's what this practice has. So private practice with short partnership track and the complexity that I wanted. It also has a mix of diagnostic and interventional radiology as well, which means I will be doing approximately 60 to 70% of interventional work, which means I'll be doing procedures about 60, 70% of the time but I'll also be reading diagnostic imaging the other 30 or so percent of the time. Because sometimes after you're on your feet for 12 hours a day wearing lead, you just wanna break and just wanna sit down, crank through some CTs, X-rays, and MRIs, and finish the day. And what I tell everybody that's going into interventional radiology and looking for a job afterwards is that you never want to lose your diagnostic training. Diagnostic radiology is a huge component of interventional radiology and you never want to give that up because it's very hard to pick up once you've left it. If I were to go join a practice that was 100% interventional radiology and I didn't do any diagnostic for like 10 plus years, it would be extremely difficult for me to come back and try to crank through studies again. I never want to lose that skill set and I've already kind of lost it because I haven't done it this year. This is why it's so important to me. And furthermore, on that subject, once I get older in my career of interventional radiology, maybe I'm 50, 55 years old, I won't want to be wearing lead all day long cranking out cases. I want to be sitting in a chair having a nice predictable schedule and just read studies. It's a great skill set and you should never let that go. Another huge plus about this practice is that I get a ton of vacation time, which is very important for me. And it's not because I don't don't like working obviously it's because I run this full social media business on the side and it's very important that I still maintain time to devote to this business as well so I'm a diagnostic and interventional radiologist but I'm also a part-time youtuber which sounds crazy to say that I'm also a youtuber but facts are facts and I do this part-time and I'm going to keep doing it because I love what I've built so far and I'm not just going to give it up just because I got a new job so another amazing thing about my job is that I absolutely love the people I work with. Well, I haven't worked with them yet, but I've talked to a lot of them and they all seem very similar to me, think similarly to me. And our goal is to just grow, grow, grow this practice and make it huge. And everybody has a nice business mindset, which is very hard to find in medicine. And the next best thing about this practice is that my co-fellow Matt also went and visited this practice and signed for a job as well. Matt is my good friend in fellowship. I've known him since intern year where we did our internship at the same hospital at Lenox Hill. Now we did fellowship together here in New York and we are both moving and working at the same practice together. So we will be colleagues potentially forever, which is awesome. So now let's get into my thoughts on the job market. I remember people telling me I could kind of get whatever job I wanted in whatever location I wanted, but that didn't really hold true. I think everybody can probably find a job after they finish fellowship, but there are vastly different jobs out there across the US, ranging from super complex RBU-based jobs all the way to 100% IR jobs in academic institutions. There's such a wide variety and everything from vacation to salary is 
vastly different amongst all of them. I think that's why I didn't really pursue other places because I wasn't really interested in what they had to offer until I found this current job. I do, however, think the job market will continue to grow going forward, so I wouldn't be too worried if you're a future or budding interventional radiologist. I will say though, if you plan on joining private practice later on down the road, you will likely have to do some sort of diagnostic radiology because there are very few private practices that will allow you to do 100% interventional work. It's just the way it is. So what are my overall thoughts about the job? Well, I'm thrilled. I literally am thrilled. I couldn't have asked for a better job. It is exactly what I was looking for in every aspect. I'm super pumped to start working. I still have two months left of fellowship, but nonetheless, I'm super excited, but I am a little nervous to move again because we just got here. Now I have to move again. But the good thing is, now I can do a full apartment tour before I leave. And I think so many people have been requesting that video since I moved in the first place. And since I'm moving out of the city, it is also time that I get a car and I have no idea what car to get. I just sold my car, I sold Andriana's car right before we moved up here like eight, nine months ago. And now I have to go and buy two new cars and I have no idea which car to get. And I would like your input. So comment below what car I should get. I'll probably Probably go car shopping in the near future and if you want me to take you along for the ride i will as well so to sum all of this up i got my very first job as a diagnostic and interventional radiologist and i have never been more excited 14 years of medical training has all culminated to this and i'm officially almost an attending what could be better so on that note smash the like subscribe button follow my instagram and tiktok if you don't already and i'll see you all on the next video